I'm thrilled to welcome to the stage Jo Vandervoort and Marcelo Lebri, the co-founders of Remote. We know there are many advantages of embracing remote work, but to get there, we have to get the basics right first. Yob and Marcelo have extensive experience in remote work, leadership, and practice, and their company has really been a pioneer in remote collaboration and communication. They now have employees in dozens of countries across six continents, so they know how to tackle the complexities that can arise with a global workforce. If your team is wondering how to best hire in other countries, how to design processes that will work across time zones, and even how to gauge performance, you're going to get your questions answered during this session. Let's listen in. All right, we're live. Uh, well, this is uh, interesting, Marcelo. We we talk every single day, but now the rest of the world gets to see us talk yes. to each other. <laughs> we have to we have to censor ourselves a little bit. Um, maybe to start off, let's start with the introduction. So I'm Joop. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Remote. Yeah, I'm Marcelo. I'm CTO and co-founder at Remote. Uh, and maybe to start, what we can do is I can tell a little bit about um, why and and we started remote and how that how that came to be, and then you can um, correct all my mistakes and exaggeration. So uh, in January two thousand nine, so before remote, um, we were different companies, and actually I was at GitLab, so I, I joined GitLab when it was approximately when it was founded. And of course, as everybody that is listening to this knows, GitLab has a fully distributed team. And one of the things we struggled with at GitLab was exactly that. We would hire someone in a country who never hired someone before. And we then had to figure out, well, how do we pay that person? How do we stay compliant? How do we provide benefits? And what I saw was that the way doing that, one, was a huge pain for everybody involved. And the experience was never really, really good. And any vendors that helped out with that were generally quite poor. Um, so after five years at GitLab, which I thought was sufficient amount of time, even though it was an amazing company, this is me sucking up to the organizers of the event, um, I, we decided to start a company together specifically to solve that problem. And so Remote Today exists for that purpose. We make it possible for you as an employer or as an employee to hire anybody anywhere in the world. And it means that we, as remote, we have local entities all throughout the work, world. There we act as an employer of record so that let's say you wanna hire Jane in Portugal, remote Portugal hires Jane, we provide payroll and benefits and everything else that comes with that. And then we invoice the actual employer. So for example, GitLab. Um, and that way for GitLab, the problems are solved in terms of how do we stay compliant? How do we provide benefits? Uh, and for Jane, it's a nice situation as well because we're an experienced employer. So we just take care of everything and it's a generally a good uh, experience. And so that's what Remote does in, in quite a few countries now since about two and a half years ago. What did I miss, Marcel? Anything? Um, they also look good. Uh, it's a good thing about <laughs> a, the team. Um, and uh, it, it's been, it's been inc in, uh, quite incredible because we, we started all this before this crazy time. Um, all this that we hear and feel about a pandemic um, and it was already a very much very much for a lot of companies and people the reality and the need was more than there uh, we've seen it become a trend uh, way before we started remote but um, the current situation of the world was a catalyst uh, for all this and and I feel that we're, we're uh, all this all the remote work we remote the company, is very much bringing the future of work to today, actually our present. Um, and it, it, it feels quite good to be part of all this. As well. Yeah, I think, I think the nice thing is what we saw at GitLab already was that the benefits of remote work are, and, it, and, it, and being a distributed company are so incredibly large, right? And then over the past you know, year, year and a few months, I think most of the world had started to work from home, forced, forced to work from home. And now slowly people are finally able to experience remote work without feeling you have to be locked at home. I think it's still a long way to go, but, um, you know, remote work during a pandemic is not the kind of remote work that, that I was lucky to, to experience. And the reason why we started the company, because there's so many benefits to it. It's, yeah. it's really incredible. Marcel, um, so that's why we started Remote. Do you want to tell a little bit about our company, like the kind of company we have in terms of culture and yeah, 
Um, we, there are a few things that were paramount when we, we started this, right? Um, we wanted to build something that truly mattered, that um, allowed companies to have a full, full world of possibilities, hire people for, rather than just locality and, and people there. Uh, uh, around and on the same country or similar geographies, and also for people um, to empower people, whatever they are in the world, independently of how the country is doing, and to get a good, great job as if they were in places like I don't know New York, London, San Francisco, you you name it. And you can only do this if if you realize the difference that exists in the world. The diversity um, and and the needs for inclusivity and 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 all similar topics. So, if you're building this for people, if you're building this so that people can have the the future of work becomes something where people actually enjoy life rather than uh, live to work, it has a fundamental embody that right. So it, we 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 set up five very fundamental values uh, at the beginning of, of our journey, uh, kindness, ownership, ambition, transparency, and excellence. Now these may sound like uh, buzzwords, but the truth to the matter is that these are not company values, these are people values. Right? We, we, we chose those because they represent what we feel that the future of work should be and how the future workplaces um, should behave in a way and, 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 and enable people and, and promote people to do to live better lives, right? um, and that was the core, I believe, of what we set out to do. I think when we start, when we were two, it was quite easy. Um, now at two hundred and fifty, um, it's. I can say that it's a lot harder. It's not. I think that it resonates a lot with people, um, even people that were in companies that were not very transparent or kind, but these are, again, human values. And so it's very easy for people to relate to and to also want to keep them um, because we all know what it feels like to work in places without those values. Um, and if the future of work is whatever we want it to be, then surely um, it can uh, summarize what we feel like and those values are that in a way. I think uh, the interesting thing is that when you tell people, well, one of our values is kindness, everybody re responds with, wow, that's so great. And then, then they join yeah. and it's like, it's really is true. And it's just a little bit sad that that is what people are surprised by because it's yeah. it's such an incredibly, you know, low threshold to, to get to that point, right? You just, you know, your job is in the end, just a job. And so like, let's make it nice. You spend a lot of hours, maybe, you know, maybe eight hours, five days of a week that's that's a lot of time you really want to make sure that that time at least you spend you know feeling challenged in 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 the right ways and and other than that having a comfortable relationship with with your colleagues and yeah i think i think that's at least for me kindness is one of the values that i'm you know there's no compromises made to that ever like you can always be kind to people especially because all we're talking about is you know business and technology there's <laughs> there's no reason ever to not be kind to to your colleagues so um yeah i think I, but yeah i i think it really helped for us to build the business like on, on stooled on those things first one you know those really strong values um, the fact that we're distributed and we whenever we can hire we will hire we make a point out of hiring there we don't specifically look for people in a particular region or decide we're going to expand to a particular territory and the nice thing, of course, for us is that, you know, we're able to build and use our own product in, in doing so. So we have, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of customers by now that, that do exactly the same thing. Right? And I think that's very exciting because what we see is that people start to, and companies start to hire from anywhere. They say, well, we can hire you wherever remote uh, can, can help us. And in doing so, um, they built really nice organizations, very diverse organizations in almost every sense of the word. And I think you see that at the remote as well, where we have quite a diverse organization. And that's not because we put particular, you know, emphasis on it in terms of, in, in almost any way, I think the only thing we do is we just look for great people wherever they are. And, and you, you know, if you hire those people, you're going to end up with a really diverse organization, which is really, really nice. And it helps a lot with all the other parts as well, with all the other values. Yeah, I fully agree. I think in, in 
the the old excuse of I mean the team all looks the same because we just hired locally. Right? It's yeah. not a, no longer the case. Um, you have a full well, world um, of possibilities of people you can hire and you can meet, and, and that will increase the productivity and the different values within the company uh, and bring so much richness to the culture and and, and to discussions. That's just un, it's unmeasurable. Um, it's insane. It's a different. It's a totally different world. I'd say in that sense. So for remote work, I think fundamental is working asynchronously, right? Uh, and why why is it why is it absolutely necessary? Because people live in different time zones. There's no magical cure to time zones. We can't all work the same nine to five. That's going to horribly break. And by uh, and besides that, I don't like to work nine to five. I like to work whenever I feel like working, and not at, uh, at the moments where I don't. So. Uh, Asynchronous work. Marcelo, what is it? Why is it? How do you do it properly? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's, it seems like a very like big, ugly word. Um, and, and also we've seen lately being thrown around, being thrown around for a lot of different reasons, but essentially it is to understand that you can't depend on people at always to be online working with you at the same time. And that, it's the opposite of you working, someone coming by and say, hey, do you want to chat about this and patting on the back? And then you have to take your head upset, look very upset and, and, and smell other people as well. And, and so the async work allows you to uh, plan the work um, according to your availability, making sure that some things you do on your own, um, because it's just the nature of most jobs. Um, and the other things that you need to collaborate on, you can plan ahead when you're going to collaborate. So you will not assume if people are online or not. I mean, we could be in the same time zone, but we have kids. So we know how much uh, that changes your time zone um, <laughs> and uh, availability. And, and so the async, the, the async way of working allows you to exactly space out um, uh, in time your slots where you can be pr highly productive when you're gonna work alone, when you're gonna need others. And also make sure that everyone is always um, sort of in the flow in sense that if you wanna block a point of time to just work on something, you can do so. And if that the other person you depend on to do some tasks also needs something done, you can both do that and then eventually come together to build something. So the asynchronous way of working is not just a way to increase productivity, because it respects uh, people's needs and time, but it's more inclusive. You don't make assumptions if someone is working, as you said, nine to five. I don't know. It depends on, on the country, the culture. Some people love to work like straight on and it's fine. Uh, other people do prefer to take breaks and do life. And that's perfect as well. We just do different things uh, and we are fundamentally different. And for that reason, async work, is one of the core tenets of uh, remote work. We have people distributed all over the, the world. On top of that, most of these people work from home. And we know there's a lot of distractions. There's animals and pets and, uh, and things happening and the mail person coming in, uh, cleaning person barging in and, and things like that. And, and so we know that it, it you can't always be on um, at your peak productivity. And so what is the point, for instance, what is the point of you being at work uh, when you don't feel like, when you don't feel productive, where you're wasting three times to uh, three hours to do something you usually take 10 minutes, right? Just take a break, do, go do you. And, and then you, you, you come back later and you're super productive um, in those five minutes, five, 10 minutes. And that's the basics of a sync work. It's not magical, um, it's just respectful. I think I think the nice thing is is that if you work asynchronous well, or to be able to work asynchronously well, you have to trust people. You have to give them ownership, and you have to give them independence because you have a task, and if you get stuck on that task, you have to be able to, or you get stuck at a you know a moment of decision, a fork in the road, for example. You have to be able to give people the trust and the ownership that they actually take that decision themselves and not wait on other people. Otherwise, it's impossible to work asynchronously, right? And this is what you see in offices where, you know, I come into a fork in the road to my work. I can just, 
And this is what ha- would happen, of course. I would walk over to someone, to my boss or my manager. I would wave them over and say, what do I do? Go left or right? And then if you work asynchronously, that person, one, you don't really want to ask them. But even if you wanted to, they might be asleep or they might be at the gym or whatever else. And so if you give people trust and ownership, then they will have to make and they will will make the decision themselves. And I think the interesting thing here is that if you think about this a lot, that the overhead of waiting for consensus or even just waiting for approval of a peer might be and it probably is significantly more expensive than the cost of reverting a you know a decision that they yep. made wrongly because usually people don't make the wrong decision right usually they have a good idea about the direction there's very little situations which is actually like the toss of the die where you know depending on the outcome it might be one or the other usually there's there's something weighted and then a person can just make a decision comfortably or sometimes just based on taste for example it can be a million different things um, and it, I I think that is that makes remote work. And I always say this remote work is such a great forcing function for good habits because you're forced <coughs> to give people trust. You're forced to give people independence and that just benefits everybody. No one likes to have someone looking over their shoulder and then helping them make, or like pointing out on their screen what to do and what decisions to be made. Everybody likes to just get work done, right? Get shit done. It's nice. You sit down, you make decisions, you go from beginning to end, and that doesn't mean that you can't work together with colleagues. It's a very different thing in of itself. You, you can do that. And that's there's no reason you can't do that remotely. But when you just want to get stuff done, it's re- it feels much nicer if you don't feel the need to constantly get approval or get sign-offs. And then when there's moments where you do have that, then you have to organize your work in a way that if you actually get locked or you're actually running up to a review mode, right? Like in code, you know, if you want to merge something, you are going to assign it to someone so that they can review your merge request. That's a very natural point to, to get there. And then the person has to have enough ownership to say, well, I'm going to t- pick up this other task or I'm going to st- start working on something else while I wait for my colleagues to, you know, wake up, get back from the supermarket and review my merge request. And so, you know, you have this really strong forcing function towards trust, towards ownership that ultimately benefits everybody in almost any situation. It has very little downsides because if you do want to work together, if you do want to, you know, even like sitting together or like directly collaborating or just casually to do, you know, we're all working, but we are talking with each other. You can do all of those things online as well. So you get so much more for free. So I, I think that's, that is one of my favorite things about remote work is that you you can have it all. Yeah. Well, one of the things that people ask very uh, often, people, especially people that never were actually work at Sing, is like, what does that do to the culture of the company, uh, the team? And it's quite interesting to see that the assumption is, well, it, it's just people working on different things. Be, the culture will be quite damaged. And it's quite the opposite. Because when people decide to share time and a call or a hangout session it is deliberate it's not like well i have to go i have i was taking having a coffee and someone came in and i'm gonna have to chit chat because i'm having my coffee no it's fundamentally deliberate um there's also something that is is um it is impactful the fact that what you see here this is my life i'm in my house um the things that go by that there's a kid running around or my dog making noises. There's always my life story behind it. And so the, 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 what, what is shared, it is more powerful. It is more deliberate. And the impact uh, on, on the company is that you actually build more sincere environment and sort of no bullshit because you, you, if you don't wanna hang out with someone, you just don't open the Zoom call. Uh, or don't join a session because you're doing what you want to be doing at that time. And that empowers everyone, yourself uh, as an individual, the team, and ultimately the company. Because what you want is to create an environment where everyone is welcome to either just focus on work, share if they feel like sharing, or not sharing because we all have our days and sometimes we don't really feel like sharing. And I think that is that is very it is different. It's not better uh, than net or, or 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 worse than working in an office. It's just fundamentally different. I think the the biggest key uh, to bringing remote work into the future of work is accepting that it's just fundamentally different. 
Um, it's a different reality. Different yeah, it's like a, yeah, the relationship with work sort of changes in a sense that if you don't want it to be the epicenter of your social life, it doesn't have to be so. And like you're not forced in a situation where it is so. If you do want to socialize a lot with your colleagues, and I think you know we see this at remote where we have you know, many colleagues that do get together very regularly, also in person, but also like online and they hang out and they work together. Uh, but then we have many other colleagues that they don't do that and that, you know, prefer to just do work and then live the rest of their life, which is, you know, it sounds, I don't know how it sounds, but like, I, I, I like the idea that you, the relationship with work doesn't have to be like, as you said in the beginning, life shouldn't revolve around work, right? Like work should be a facet of your life and maybe an important facet of your life. That is up to you, but nonetheless should be a facet of your life and not not dictate where you live, when you live, where where you live, you know? It, I, I think that's that's such an antiquated idea, even though that's yeah. basically been the status quo for the past <laughs> hundreds of years. The fact that you can switch houses, look, countries even yeah. without having to worry about like your income your family or your safety um it is i i think it's sometimes priceless in some cases priceless yeah um, yeah i moved between countries when i was working at gitlab and then just a few weeks ago i moved again between countries and in of itself is a pain but like, it's really nice that nothing about your work situation changes like it just stays completely the same yeah and then the last little bit about bureaucracy and and law legal that, that is what our company solves so that, yeah that, <laughs> that's the last little thing i think um, maybe interesting to get into as like a last subject here i hear very often okay but how do you, you you do everything remotely sure but like how do you make sure people do their work well how do you you know train people how do you manage performance and i think you know notoriously there are several organizations that have to start you know, that started to really track their employees. And I know if you're on TikTok, you might've seen videos of people attaching like a mouse to a fan so that a mouse is always moving. So it looks like someone is online and having activity. I mean, I think we don't have to tell anybody that's not the way to deal with performers, but you, Marcel, as a, as a, as a leader of many engineers and, and other people, how, what do you, how do you manage performance in a remote team? Yeah, like, I think there's, some misunderstanding about what performance is within um, the context of work. A lot of the use case is mostly binary. Um, you're either achieving your, what you're supposed to or not, right? Um, now, you only should get into measuring things when, when something is off, like your customers aren't happy, you're not delivering what you thought you should be delivering, or something is happening that is, is not supposed to be. Like in, and in that case, it's worth looking into. Um, other than that, it's just not. Now, often the case for not having the expected performance is not on the employee. I, I'd say 99% is not on the employee. It is about the expectations that were set. Um, the employer did hire that person. So they are supposed to know, uh, they've done their due diligence and uh, understanding if there was a good match between the, the job and, and the person. And setting the person up for success is key to that uh, relationship. Now, we do know that sometimes things fail and, 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 and some mismatches happen, well, such as life. Um, and then it, 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 you employ whatever you need to employ performance improvement plan, you work with the person to uh, get up uh, to specs and, and or you understand that the work that you're expecting is completely uh, off and you have to adjust, adjust that to the team that you have and the people and, and, and to your business as well. Now, having been a manager, and this is my probably seventh team, I believe, um, there's no difference. There's absolutely no difference. I, what I've seen in the past is that offices can detract way more than working in sync. For the, the single fact that when someone is in the flow, like focused on worrying on something, there's always something happen. Someone getting up, getting a coffee, asking if you want to also get a coffee or uh, someone wanting to show you cat pictures. And, and all that is way more distracting. The commute uh, and all that retracts a lot of energy. Uh, 
And, and, and then it, it is way trickier to understand if the problem we, uh, behind performance comes from the relationship between the job, the expectation and the person, or from anything else, like the environment, the whatever. And I think that with remote work, you can remove away all those variables that happen around it and focus on the problem if you have it or on the great results if you have them as well. I think one of the interesting things here is that, you know, when employers say, how do I know people are actually doing the work? I always question like, what is the work that you're doing that you don't know that your employees are actually performing any work? It should be really obvious, right? Whether they are creating value or not, right? Like things should break or things should not, not happen if they are not working rather than you tracking whether they're moving their mouse. It should be like actually having value. Like if you have a manager with you know let's say up to 10 reports or so that manager should be able to at least have an idea of what is happening with each one of these people and whether they have been absent completely or not like yeah. it, it it really baffles me to see this like in almost any situation even in a situation where you have one manager with many many reports like in a call center for example right it's very obvious that you know there's going to be you know a change in capacity in a team if someone is completely not doing their work so it's just it, it really baffles me that employers find the need to to track people when you can just literally look at their work like do your the, the, you know the basic minimum thing to, as, as a manager which is you know yeah. very similar I think you're referencing which is you know people that consider themselves great managers in offices many times are not great managers in offices they are just people that like to look over the shoulder and like yeah. observe the you know the physical behavior of people in the office and, and, and that's a very different thing I don't think that's managing I don't think that is like enabling your team I think that's just being you know a bit of an ass so <laughs> um <laughs> And, and again, like remote work is such a good forcing function for this, right? Because it becomes super obvious what, what is a good manager, who is a good manager, and, and really who isn't. Um, great. Any, anything else yeah. to share, Marcel? I think we, we're at time. I think we're on time, yeah. Very right. nice. Thanks, everybody. If you want to know more about remote, remote.com, it's very easy. Um, and then if you Google our names, you'll find us on Twitter and you can ask us anything there. Bye, everybody.